I don't know about you, but that sounds weak to me. I heard rocks do better job. I heard the rocks. Come on now. The rocks, the earth, the stars, the planet, the moon worships him. Come on now. If you're sitting down, you're missing it. If you're sitting down, you're missing it. You got to get up and worship the king. He is the king. See, you're looking, you're looking for a president. I'm looking for a king. You're looking for a president, but I'm looking for a king. I don't care who's in the White House. I know who sits on the throne. I know who sits in the circle of the earth. He, listen, he holds my today. He holds my tomorrow. And I know where I'm going. I ain't care about that Elmo in the White House. I know one that sits on the circle of the earth. And nothing breathes, and nothing moves, and nothing operates without him. He can't be impeached. He has a mugshot too. Trump is gangster now. He got mugshot. You can be seated in the presence of an awesome God. I got buck in the house. Don't mess with me. I got buck in the house. You mess with me, I'll tell you down, baby. Now come over here, don't get froggy. I got Buck in the house, that's my homie. That's right, mess with me, we'll mess you up. And man, it's been, it been an amazing journey. I love coming here. I remember when I first met Pastor. Pastor was in kidding. he said, I got this big truck waiting for you outside. And I was like, how big? Went out there, that thing was humongous. It took, took the whole airport. <laughs> And on top of that, he took me out and he said, we're going to eat something different. We ate some alligator. I was like, Lord, you sure you, but you know, true men of God, my sister, your blessing, family blessing, and you have an amazing inheritance here on the earth, but the one in the kingdom is even better. Amen. And you know what's amazing? It's, it's, it, you see, God gives you treasures. There's places I ministers in this place I call friends. You with me? Places you minister, friends, you call friends. These are my friends. Yeah. They're my friends. Buck and my friend. Buck texts me. He calls me. Check up on me. That's friendship. Amen? That's friendship. And, and I'm, so, I'm so grateful because I got my brother here, Dr. Juan Martinez, in the house. Amen? <laughs> Pastor Ruthie. Juan got his papers. I'm not talking about no GD either. Amen? He got a doctorate degree. It was an honor to be there and to see what God can do. Because this is not where you start. It's where you finish. Yes. You with me? Yes. I got my brother. He, my, my pastor preached a message today. It was so fire. My brother been shot at so many times, close range. And pastor preached. And the message was so powerful, the anointing. He said, I went up there. My heart was beating. I almost pee on myself. <laughs> That's a good anointing. You know, that anointing is strong. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, that anointing is strong. <laughs> when you go up, you can't hold it. <laughs> so, you know, he preached good. Come on now. He preached good. I got my friend from Tampa. Amen. He said he's Jewish, but I don't believe it. He looked Dominican. <laughs> so, I am blessed to be here. Listen, I thank all of you for coming. You could have been, you could have stayed home. I got to work tomorrow. And you're here because you love Jesus. Amen? Come on. You love Jesus. That's why you're here. Amen? That's why you're here. Amen? And uh, the last thing I said before I get into the message, pray for me. I got second eye surgery October 25th. So, I got to get my eyesight back. Amen? You with me? I got to get my eyesight back to make Jesus Christ proud. Amen? So you pray for me. I, I have to take my time a little bit because the eyes are not working as good as supposed to, but the anointing is still here. Amen? Amen? I, I want to talk to you tonight. Listen, listen. the Bible says in, in Isaiah 54, 
54, 17, I believe, Isaiah says, in 54, 17, it says, it says, uh, let me just stretch it. In 54, Isaiah 54, 17, it says, it says, no weapon form against me will prosper. You, you hear what I'm saying? No weapon. Isaiah 54, 17 says, there's no weapon form against me will prosper. Uh, you get it? I, but I, I, I want to teach you how the devil works. Or I had a PhD in witchcraft. Believe me, I was, doing witch, I was doing witchcraft to witches, and I was like, you couldn't do that, but I was trying to kill them all. With me? No weapon form against me was prosper. But th this, this is the key. To, this is how the devil used that against us. I'm going to teach you something. How the devil used that scripture against us. But see, the devil understands one thing. He knows no weapon formed against you will prosper. But he understands that he has to tell me, custom me, engineer, demonically engineer a weapon to make you believe that it will prosper against you. He's not going to hit you with nothing generic. Because the generic witchcraft, generic attack, trial, tribulation, don't work. The only thing that works against you when it's personal. When the devil, he, he can create a satanic, a demonic weapon, custom made, telling me to you. That's when the, the test is on if Jesus is Jesus or he's not. One of, it, it is one of the greatest stories in the Bible, in the Old Testament, spiritual warfare, Deuteronomy chapter 7. Let me break it down real quick. There's a lot of devils here tonight. So we're going to get busy. Don't come here because you can't make up and you brush your hair. You still got devils. The makeup ain't going to help you. You can't medicate a devil. You can't medicate one. That's, that's the wheat church. That's, that's the church that Pastor was talking about, the secret friendly church. They medicate devils with Starbucks. Yeah. Pastor preached it today, so I'm going to run with it. <laughs> I'm not in trouble. <laughs> he started it. <laughs> so I'm going to finish it. You with me? So, so custom engineering and satanic engineering made weapon against you. And Deuteronomy chapter 7 proves proves it to you. See, the devil has to understand, the devil, strategies of the demonic kingdom, satanic kingdom, levels of spiritual warfare in the dark side, the shadows of the demonic, the devil comes at you. Because this is what the devil does. See, in Deuteronomy chapter 7, listen to Deuteronomy, I'm just going to give you a, pre a preview. Deuteronomy chapter 7 works like this. It's a crazy chapter, spiritual warfare, freedom chapter. Because Moses show up to the scene. Well, Aaron show up to the scene. They, show up, they show up to they step up to Pharaoh. You, it's going to get gangster tonight. They step up to Pharaoh. And then Moses turn around. You know, Aaron and Moses, you know the story. They strike the water, turns into blood. And what did Pharaoh say? Pharaoh said, you got nothing on us. I got this too. He called his magician. He called his sorcerers. He called his, his, the dude with the magic art. He called them. They strike the water to do the same thing. The fight is on. It's God, Moses, and Aaron against Pharaoh representing the devil and the magicians. Now the fight is on. He says, strike. He turns around. He said, he, then, then Moses turns around and the Lord speaks to Moses and speaks to Aaron. He said, he says, strike the, strike, strike the, strike the land. I mean, strike the, I got to look it up, man, because my eyes are jacked up. I'm trying to, I got so much running in my head. Because we, 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 you can't miss this. So I got to give it to you. The showdown between God, the devil, represent Pharaoh, an instrument of the devil, and the magicians and the sorcerers. It says, strike the waters. The secret arts, they do the same thing. They say, we got this. We can do this too. 
Then God says, strike. Then he told Aaron, strike the waters. And frogs come out. Magician could do the same thing. Let me just say one thing, a footnote. When I came to church, I came from hell to church. We did the same thing you did in demon church. We lay hands, you lay hands. You spoke in tongues, we spoke in tongues. You prophesy, we prophesy. It's the same thing you did. We had church more than you did. We had church from 7 in the evening to 5 in the morning. When you were home watching Netflix. We did everything. I said, Lord, why did I get saved? I was doing this in demon church at the age of eight. I was laying hands, speaking in demonic tongues, and I was falling backwards like you did. You fell in the spirit, I fell backwards in the demonic. I said, I was doing the same thing they were doing. Why would I come here and do this? When I did, I was doing it for 25 years. And the Lord said, no, there's a difference between, the, between your, the demon church, the demonic church, and my church. And I said, what is the difference then? He said, because few will carry my presence. He said, few will carry my presence. And the difference between us and the demon church, we carry the presence of God. We carry the presence of God. We carry the presence. You with me? We carry the presence of God. They turn the blood into water. After they hit the water with the blood, they turn the, he said, stretch, stretch out your staff over the waters. What came out? The frogs came out. They did the same thing. They did the same thing. Frogs came out. They did the same thing. The magician did the same thing. They were, they were, he said, we can do this. We got this. You know, you, can, you got stuff. We got stuff. You know, they, they, because you see, this is what the devil does. Because this is what happened to the believer. This is when the weapon formed, no prosper happened. See, the devil went one round, Jesus went round. The devil wins the second round, Jesus wins the second round. The devil does this, Je Jesus does it. The Jesus does it, the devil does it. And then you, as a vessel of honor, you get weak, fear, unbelief, and doubt comes into your life. Because now you're saying, I got the devil by the throat one round, now he got me by the throat. But you don't believe, you don't believe the, the resume that God has upon your life that he has brought you through. He has fought every fight that he has fought every fight in your life in the name of of Jesus, and now you have doubt, fear, and unbelief because now you see that the magicians and the sorcerers and the magic that they got is doing the same thing that God is doing. But this is your this is the, the mistake that we make. We fall into the natural instead of rocking the supernatural. So now, now they turn around, they say, strike the water, blood, strike the land, frogs. Now the fight got serious. And that's what happened in your life. That's why the scripture, you quote it, but you don't believe it. Because you see, you know the word, but you don't know the God of the word. You know the word, but you don't know God of the word. So now you have doubt, belief, and fear. Because now the fight is on. Now the fight, you, you, don't, you see... Oh, the devil couldn't do the same thing. The devil got the same power that God has. You with me? Right. Now the devil got the same power. Turn blood, frogs. Now the devil got the same power. And now we now, now we sizing up the devil with Jesus. You gotta get off the drugs. Crazy. Now the fight is three and three. And God said, Enough. He said, Enough. I draw the line. 
enough. I distinguish myself from all the things that you believe that is bigger than me. God said, I draw the line. He told Moses and told Aaron, strike the earth. He stroked the earth and turned the earth dust into gnats. He took dust, he turned dirt into gnats. In other words, and then the magicians turned. They couldn't do it. And they turned to Pharaoh and they said, this must be the finger of God. You're missing it because God can take the earth, strike it, and turn it into that. Put a respirating system, eyes, antennas, and a DNA on something that was nothing, but he can make something. He can take nothing and make something out of it. And you're missing it because your situation, he can take it and make something out of nothing, out of your situation, because he's God. He's God. So he took, he took nothing. But the thing, now the devil says, I can't beat them. I can't beat their God. Pharaoh said. Pharaoh said, I can't beat their God. So you know what Pharaoh does? Pharaoh said, I can't beat their God, but he can come after you. He can come after you. He know he can't beat God, but he can come after you. Oh, it's going to get good. He can come after you. He can come after you. The devil wants you to think he got power. But God. You know what strike the earth? Think about dust. And turns it into bugs. You, you probably got bugs in your house. So you're used to it. You're not getting it. <laughs> got bugs in your house. So you're like, I got bugs too. I can Get some ray in your house. Get the bugs out. The magician said, that's the finger of God. Because the magician couldn't duplicate it. Because God will let you play around. God will make you believe that you got power. And God will make you believe that you're bigger than him. Then he shows off. Then he shows off. He said, I'm God. Listen. Then he said, I'm God. Now the devil knows that he can't be God, but he can come after you. He can come after you. And this is what the devil uses. No, this is what the devil uses. The devil uses confinement, boundaries, and limitations. Yeah. Unbelievers. Boundaries, confinement, and limitations. Those are his weapons. You grow old in church, but you don't grow up. He uses those weapons against the believer because he wants you to grow, but not go so far. So you come to church in chains. You worship in chains. You read your Bible in chains. You can go so far, but you can't. You're still in Egypt. So you come, and all I hear coming down the aisle, nobody clanking. You come and change. You come and change. The devil knows the game. Bringing confinement, confinement to you, your spiritual environment. You grow old, but you don't grow up because you're still in shackles. You're still in chains. You worship. Yeah, I have worship, but you have limitations. Some of you, I saw you, I looked around, you're like, cute. It's like the popcorn bag, right? He was talking about popcorn, right? You put it in the microwave, and it pop, 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 but some kernels don't pop. They're right here. Because they're stubborn. They're too cute to pop. But it was a football game, they pop. Baseball game, they pop. I know who your God is. Brings limitation, boundary to your spiritual life. You have, you have potentials to be a great white, but you look like Mimo. 
<laughs> you got pretension to be great white, but you look like Mimo. Because in, I, there was a story in, in South Africa, they had this bear, and they had him in the, in the zoo for like 20 years. You see, they had him in the zoo for 20 years, and they had him in a cage with 9 by 12, so the bear just went back and forth for 20 years. But when they took him out to the water and they released him, the bear only knew 9 by 12. And that's your story. You come to church, but all you know is 9 by 12. It's okay, I'm coming your way. I'm leaving tomorrow anyway. <laughs> See, the devil wants you to have freedom with restriction. God wants you to have freedom without limitations. Oh, I come to church. So why? The devil comes to church too, baby, because there's a bunch of gossipers in here. And then you, you, you got that lingo, Christian lingo. I'm only, I'm only telling you, my sister, because I just want you to pray for them. You're a gossiper. Bring your tongue down here. We're burning. That's why you ain't blessed, because you're a hater. So you settle, and you settle to a mediocre Christianity, but then you got frustration, you got anger. You remind me of the brother from 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 uh, 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 the brother from the the, par the, par the parables of the brother of the prodigal son, the hateful brother that was still in the house. Because you 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 worship with limitation, you worship with restriction. Your spiritual environment, your spiritual environment is contaminated by the do's and don'ts with the devil. How he wants you to live. And then you listen to Joseph Prince, and you listen to these wackos on TV, right? And these wackos on TV say everything is free. Fred, grace, 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 grace. And grace is taking you straight to hell. Yeah. Pastor preached today, repent or go somewhere else. Pastor preached that today. You go to a Mickey Mouse church, but you don't drive to a real church because you're afraid to be confronted. You're afraid to be confronted spiritually. So you sit over in that Starbucks church, that church of the frigid air, that dead church. <laughs> the comfortable one. You know, I used to, when David Wilkinson used to preach, he used to make me uncomfortable. I used to say, why, why did I come this Sunday? What's wrong with that old man? <laughs> and when Nicky used to preach, we didn't know what he was talking, Spanish or English. He was all over the place. So you, 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 you're living your life under boundaries and restrictions and limitations. Because the devil has real estate over your life. Well, and then you have a mediocre life. Because the devil can't beat God, but he could come after you with those three weapons. I got my eyesight jacked up. You know my eyesight feel right now? I feel like a dirty windshield. I can't see past that. I can't see past that. But do you think I got restriction, limitations, and boundaries? I got an iPhone. I stretch stuff. One, Dr. Juan taught me how to do that. He taught me how to take. I taught my brother today. I taught my brother to the hotel. Two blind guys were teaching how to use the iPhone. <laughs> I said, yo, if you put it and you stretch it, you can see the thing real big. He got the fake gazelles on, you know what I mean? He think he's heavy D. <laughs> so I'll say, if you stretch it, you can see the letters real big. See, I have, because I see too much in Christ. I ain't going to put no limitation on me, no boundaries and the restriction. You're going to do that on me, baby, because, you know, I've been in the bath. See, what happened was, you were in the mountaintop, right? This is what happened to Peter. Peter was crazy. Peter was like a little bus. I got, I got a lot of backlash in, in, uh, in YouTube because I said little bus. And I'm still going to say little bus. I don't care what you say or your mama say. They ain't going to restrict me from preaching. Must be crazy, stupid. But the devil, don't, devil, devil doesn't mind you come to church. Devil doesn't mind you read your little scripture. Devil doesn't mind you do a little worship song. Some of you standing over here. You know Netflix, but you don't know Psalms 23. And you're standing over here thinking, oh, all this stuff. And little song, you lip singing. I seen y'all lip singing. 
Nene Bellini. <laughs> because the devil understand, he say, how, how the devil understand how far you can go in your spiritual life. You see, so, 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 so I said about the little bus and all that stuff. I said that because I got off the little bus. I ain't talking about nobody else. I'm talking about me. I tell them me. I, I point the finger on me. Am I embarrassed to say I got off the little bus? It made me a little rush. You know what the little bus is, right? People say, why well, you say that? They're mentally handicapped. No, retards. <laughs> That's why I got off. You know, my mom just say, well, why can't you be like your cousin Maria? Cause every, every Puerto Rican got a Maria in the family. You know that. And we're going to be like your cousin Maria. She's so smart. She's so smart. She's so smart. You know, my cousin Maria is crazy as a fruitcake. <laughs> because the devil understands. The word restrictions in the, devil, in the devil's camp is restricting your faith. Right. Putting limitations on your faith. Putting limitations on your growth. Because you won't know he's God without faith. So the devil understand he has to restrict your faith, limits on your faith, right? That's what the devil, he, he know he needs to confine you and put you in a box. That's why the church was so stupid. When the COVID-19 came, everybody got split up. Well, you wear the mask, I'm not wearing the mask. You got the shot, you got the booster? <laughs> I don't care if you took the booster, the shot. You still my brother and sister. You deal with that with God. That's between you and God. You took the shot, the booster, whatever you want to take. Listen, I never took a shot. I ain't take no booster. I ain't take no COVID crap. I ain't, I ain't take no flu shot. I ain't take none of that crap. Crazy. I cough on you. That's it. Take some NyQuil. NyQuil is like the NyQuil. <laughs> NyQuil is, it's like the drug for Christians. <laughs> we get high. We get high on NyQuil. You be like, you get high on NyQuil. You hit that NyQuil bottle, you be like, oh, man, yo, 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 I call you tomorrow. <laughs> NyQuil will kill COVID-19. <laughs> Just saying. Pastor, give me some ingredients. We're going to sell that in the market. We're going to put it on eBay. That have a limitation. He puts you in a box. Confinement. He's confining your walk. He's confining your purpose. He's confining your destiny. Because now you don't want to move no weapon form against me or prosper. Because you're not believing. Because you're seeing the fight. Well, God won one. The devil won one one. Now he's even. God won two. The devil won two. And now you start seeing things with the natural eye. And now you start seeing things. Now, well, the devil got power. The devil got me. The devil got a strong on me. The devil got bond. The devil got that stuff on you because you want to. You want to. You want the devil to have that stuff on you. you. Listen, you don't fight the good fight. It's like saying you don't fight the good fight. You're never going to break free. So then the devil has confinement. He has restrictions on you. He has limitations on you. He has boundaries on you. And God never put those things on you. You with me so far? In the box. In the box. Put you in the box. Praying in chain. Worship in chain. Reading your Bible in chain. Coming to church in chain. But you have. You, because you see, this is what happened with the church. The church is just like the world. The devils in Washington, when they can't fix something, they legalize it. And then they call it normal. So we, in Christianity, when we don't get our breakthrough, we legalize the situation and we call it normal. Oh, that's in my family, in my family bloodline. We all crazy. We all crazy. We all drink. We all do this. We all do. It's in my family. I'm Puerto Rican. I got a temper. No, you know, you're stupid Puerto Rican. That's what you are. Because I'm not Puerto Rican no more. I got saved, I got new DNA. <laughs> got new DNA, baby. I'm not white, I'm not Puerto Rican, I'm not Dominican, I'm not Mexican, I'm not black. My DNA says red, red, cold red. That's why all things pass away. All things become new. And him only. I ain't defined by my DNA. I'm not defined by my mama. I'm not defined by my daddy. I'm not defined by my neighborhood or my environment or who I grew up with. I belong to him. And he's writing my story. So that means that he, he's writing greatness about you. He writes purpose about you. He writes destiny about you. 
You ain't no mistake. You ain't no junk. I don't care who your mother slept with. I don't care who your daddy slept with. God put you on the earth. He gave you a birthday. He sent you into time. Oh, my father's drunk, so I, you know, I drink. Oh, my mother is this, and, and I do these things because, you know, oh, 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 it's the white man's fault. No, it's your fault. People crazy. People, people jumped out, Black Lives Matter, this matters. Get out of a Black Lives Matter, that don't matter. Black life don't matter, we all matter. Everybody under the sun matters. Everybody under the sun matters. Everybody under the sun. I don't care what you are, everybody matters. Everybody's important. Everybody has a, I understand that black life matter. We know we got beat up like piñatas in the neighborhood. You know, the cops are racist, they beat us like piñatas. I understand that. I understand slavery, I understand that too, Holocaust. I understand all that. We all got, everybody got the short end of the stick. I don't care who you were. Even the white people got picked on when they came to Alice Island. When they came, immigrants, they came and they picked on you and they were racist with you too. We, hey, racism is always gonna be here. Get used to it. Don't, don't, let, don't let it define you. you, know, you racism, ain't, you can, you can, oh, you Puerto Rican, you, you speak, all that. There ain't gonna be nothing, baby, because you ain't writing my story. You ain't writing my story. Jesus is. Right, well, my story. You know, I don't live by the opinions of people. I live by the truth of God. I don't care about your opinion. Son will come out tomorrow, be another day. Jesus is in it. I'm cool with that. You need to wake up with your stupidity. Let the devil put you in confinement and box in the systems of the demonic world we live in. That's exactly, that's why we, we live in this demonic system of this world that they place this in component, but Jesus was born in the major outside of the system and Jesus died outside of the system, but you living for the system. And then, I love Trump, don't get me wrong, but my, 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 my trip, I trip on the king. I ain't talking about no Elvis, no Michael Jackson either. I'm talking about the king of kings, the Lord of the law. I'm talking about him. I'm talking about he's my king. He's my president. He's my VP. He's my senator. He's my governor. He's my mayor. That's right, baby, because he pays my rent. He feeds me. He blesses me. He wakes me up. He tells me what to do. I live for him. I don't live for no one else and no one else. I don't live for no one else but him. Because he holds my today, he holds my tomorrow. And Pastor said, there's a place called heaven. And right, Pastor, Pastor said, I'll be on Hallelujah Boulevard, baby, around the block. Ain't no Mickey D's up there. Ain't no Chick-fil-A, crazy Chick-fil-A. Close on Sunday, but you're still a devil. I'm impressed when you close on Sundays. Don't mean none to me. Gay rights. Get out of that gay rights stuff. Gay rights. Right. So Bobby and Stevie won't have a parade. <laughs> Take your gay parade somewhere else. And that little dikey little lady, blonde headed lady, whatever her name is. Little blight, what was that little blight? It looks like she looked like Justin Bieber. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, it looked like Justin Bieber. I want to be Justin Bieber. Get out with that stuff. And, you, and Oprah too, crazy Oprah. Get out with that stuff. I thought Ricky Martin in there too. He's good looking, but he's still gay. <laughs> that menudo stuff messed him up. <laughs> I'm not gonna come to church and chain. It's time to be free. We chain, chain, chain. No, that's it. It's crap. God has purchased my freedom. Yeah. From witchcraft, God has purchased my freedom. From every demonic thing I've done, God has purchased my freedom. He took the blood of his son and signed my adoption papers. Wow. Man, I was an orphan. I was, I was an orphan. I was, I was in a foster home of the world and so are you. And he came and adopted you. You with me? So I don't care what the devil got. 
I know what God got. Look at Pastor Juan Martinez. He came out of jail. He did so much time in jail. How many times? How many years you did? Ten years in jail. He came out with a suit looked like he could put five for Pastor Juan Martinez in with a broken shoe. Ruthie took him in, cleaned him up. Pastor Ruthie took him in, cleaned him up. And they got one of the most amazing marriages in the world, one of the amazing ministries in the planet they have. <laughs> they have. And, he, and, and plus, he just got his doctor's degree the other day. Go to show you that even though he was, all he was doing, all he was doing was selling meth. Now he's selling, he's selling short shirts, having can short shirts. I mean, think about it. what God can do. What God can do, you don't limit God. Don't limit God for your life. Don't limit God. I was going to talk about the Dominican God, but he left. He said, I'm Jewish. You ain't Jewish. Come on. You can grow, but the devil wants you to stay in the same spiritual environment, space. He wants you to stay there because he can control you and put limits and boundaries and restrictions on you. So you could say no weapon form against me to prosper. But if you're living in the restrictions of the enemy, the boundaries of the devil, the limitation of the devil, then that weapon is moving on you. It's prospering on you. Because God never, never, God never called you to be in a box. You with me? God didn't call you to be mediocre Christianity either. Mediocre Christian, you walk like them, you talk like them, you act like them, you, you, you behave like them, and you go to the same church, they go to dead churches. How is, it that, how is it that you travel two hours to get a lousy paycheck, but you can't come to a spiritual warfare church? I mean, think about your mentality. You, you, go, you go to a dead church, your pastor's dead. A lot of pastors are dead. I'm not sitting in no dead church, man. You're going to sit in some dead church because Pastor Julio is preaching. Get out of here. Sit down, Julio. <laughs> if you ain't going to challenge me and convict me, if you're preaching, you know what happens today? This is what happens today. I want you to hear this, what the devil is doing in the house of God today. People preach. People preach. They got words, but they're empty. No edification. And they're worse. <laughs> and then what they have, what happened with preachers today, they traded their anointing for influence. <clears throat> and then we don't have discernment, so we think the influence that they got is the anointing. No, baby, because when they end up in Matthew 14, they told Jesus in Matthew 14, what they tell Jesus, well, we prophesied, we did this, we did that. The audacity that they have to confront God and tell them about their resume. And Jesus said, depart from me because I never knew you. In other words, Jesus said, you had influence, you had no fruit. You had no fruit. So depart from me because you had gifts. But you see, you can, you can fake gifts, but you can't fake fruit. You're the son of the devil. But when you come here, like this morning, you should see the altar call this morning in the house of God. People came up and people came and gave their life. The anointing was so strong in the house of God, he almost peered himself. That's good anointing. But you're afraid of coming to that because you want, you want it to be, this is your story. Your story is this. I want to be reformed. You want to look good in the outside, but you don't want to be transformed. That's your story. I'm almost done. And you bring your devils. And if you don't buy a short shirt, I'm not catching no devils out of you. <laughs> I mess with everybody. I ain't playing. God said, you don't have to stay this way or live this way. Yeah. See, what happened was when we live this way, we stay this way, we justify. Right. And then you got that whole famous word. If I get a dollar for everywhere I heard that, man, I'd be like, i buy Trump's property. <laughs> Down in Florida. Because this is what the people say. I'm waiting on God. That is so played out in the house of God. That is so played down. When God said, I give you good pastor, I give you good church, why are you waiting on me? You act like Moses. What will we do? And God said, what will happen to the staff I gave you? Stupid. Lift it up. 
The staff represented the cross of Jesus Christ. He said, lift it up, lift up the cross, lift up the staff, and see what happens. But we, we won't, give me, give me, my name is Jimmy. Lay hands on me, put your oil on me. Oh, let me call. Hey, TBN, are you there, TBN? Send me the holy water. Send me the holy oil. I want to anoint myself so everything can leave off me. That, listen, that water, they purchased that crap in Costco's. Okay? Ain't no holy land. And that oil, they got that thing from down the block. Ain't no oil from Israel. They just, pla they just put a label on it, selling crap to you that they won't even buy themselves. There's a, there's a pastor, a minister, a pastor that he casts out demons with a Bible and a cross. One time he called, he emailed me, he said, yo, you want to be on my show? I said, absolutely not. He said, why not? He said, I'm a pioneer casting out devils, he said. He said, he's a pioneer casting out devils. You probably know who he is. I mean, you're a pioneer casting out devils? I said, let me tell you something. I'm not a theologian, but I'm not stupid either. Jesus didn't walk around no Bible and no cross casting out devils. I said, because when I come up to you and I'm trying to cast out a devil with hitting you with a Bible over your head and putting a cross in your face, I'm telling you to put your faith on this and on this, not on Christ. Because everybody wants a, everybody wants a method. You know, an angle to attract you, to make you believe that this is how they do it. They're, they're special. They use these things, and it takes away glory from God. And then you got other, you got other ones saying, what is your name? And the demon saying, my name is Julio. How long you been in there, Julio? How you got in? They bust out an interview on the demon. Like the demon's applying for a job, and you know, he bought his resume. <laughs> his resume. I've been tormenting this guy for a long time. I'm doing a pretty good job. I, I beat up his family. I kicked his dog. I ate his goldfish. Uh, do, do you want to hire me? Oh, this is, and then you got other ones. I'm a prophet. <laughs> like the idiot prophet Khan. John, what's his name? Jonathan Khan? Yeah, yeah, a pimp. I got, I got, I'm a prophet. I know your social security number. <laughs> they turn the house of God into a joke instead of turning the house of God a house of prayer. Because I don't need your social, Jesus don't need your social security number. Jesus don't do income tax. <laughs> oh, people, and then you have others, others saying, how many single women are here? Here, I'm here, I'm single. I'm ready to mingle. I'm single. I'm single. That they say to you, come up, saucy for a thousand dollars. Saucy, thousand dollars. And you come up there with your ugly self. <laughs> Instead of taking that thousand dollars and doing some makeup on yourself, go get a haircut. <laughs> go buy a real dress. <laughs> it's crazy. So you give this pimp a thousand dollars, and he's gonna pray for a bow ass for you. And then ten chicks come up, ten, twelve. That's twelve thousand dollars in ten minutes. And you come up, you're like, here's my thousand dollars. You gonna get Julio for a thousand dollars? Slap Willie, crazy Fred, for a thousand dollars. What happened to the fear of God, the awesomeness of God? In the house of God. What's happened to the fear? His awe of who he is in the house of God. Why are you playing games? I don't have to pray for you about getting a man or getting a, a wife. No, that's your job. 
You right now, if you're single, you should be praying for your husband. Lord, I pray wherever he's at. I'm praying for my husband. I'm praying, Lord, that you touch him, Lord, that you bless him, that you protect him, that you bring him in your perfect timing. Same thing. I'm praying for my Esther. I'm praying for my queen. I'm praying for her right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I don't know where she's at, Lord, but you know where she's at. I'm praying. I'm lifted up in prayer. I'm praying for her every day, Lord, because when you bring her, at least we bring completion. You know, you bring truth between your two. I, Lord, bring me confirmation. Make sure I don't marry the wrong Christian. Because if you marry the wrong Christian, you're still under the yoke. <laughs> Listen, I married the right Christian, and I got a battlefield. I'm talking about, I got a new song. I, I, I'm going to talk to my sister. She's going to refine the words for me. Pat Benatar, love is a battlefield. I mean, I, I, it's easy to cast out a devil to be married. My wife got more channels than cable. <laughs> She's fine. You know, hottie. Asian hottie. And I don't, I mean, I should have prayed harder because Asian people are crazy. <laughs> They're like Louis and Chanel. <laughs> Dumb two devils. If I would marry some crazy Puerto Rican girl named Wanda, that would have been like Michael Kaur and Coach. A three hundred dollar bag, <laughs> not a five thousand dollar bag. The Asian people they need deliverance. <laughs> One time I was in uh, I was somewhere in California. I'm I'm, just, I'm new to California, and I got my phone in my pocket and I'm in a park. Right, it's about 110 degrees in the park. I mean they got the lights, the park the park was packed. We doing an outside retreat. This thing was packed, Pastor. And I'm praying for people and demons are coming out. You hear, in the park, echoes, <laughs> everybody falling out. I mean, crazy stuff. I got my phone, my phone going, bzzz, bzzz. I'm like, what the heck? Who's calling me now? I can't pick it up now. Casting out devil, casting out devil, bzzz, bzzz. <laughs> so I had these pastors in town. You know Pastor Dell and Pastor Luan, right? We preach, um, you know who they are, right? You know Pastor Dell and Luan. So they, my phone, bzzz. I'm like, man, I, I said, I'm going to ignore it. Preparing for people, speaking in tongues. I mean, the park, I mean, everybody, you couldn't see the grass. Everybody was falling out. Bzz, bzz. I, mean, I can't, I gotta stop this. I picked up the phone, right? And I looked. It's my wife with a picture with a Louis bag. <laughs> she was at the mall. I manifested. <laughs> I, I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> I didn't deliver it. I was like, whoa. <laughs> 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 Your anointing will left. Holy Spirit left the park. <laughs> I was caught. <laughs> this woman. <laughs> this devil. <laughs> oh my God. She was like. <laughs> I laid hands on myself. I invited the Holy Spirit back to finish the job. Deuteronomy 8, Pharaoh told Moses, you can let your people go sacrifice and do this and do that, but you can only go so far because Pharaoh is a representation of the enemy trying to bring restrictions and boundaries, limitations to your life. You can go so far, but you can go any further. So sometimes you have a powerful church like this one, right? Pastor Juan Martinez Church, powerful churches like theirs. But you won't go so far because the devil has limited you to a mediocre Christianity. So you're not living in plan A. You're living in plan B. Because when I was in, town, I was in the church in the Bronx, and uh, that church was powerful, but it died. And I was like, Lord, I'm disappointed. I said, if this is Christianity, I did better as a devil worshiper. Seriously, I was very honest, very transparent. And then I heard someone say, Times Square Church, Times Square Church, fire, good, awesome, powerful. David Wilkinson. So who the heck is that? Well, what the heck is going on? So I did my homework. I started asking people, yo, what's this Times Square Church? What, what is this? I went to a Times Square Church my first night on a Thursday night, prayer night. They had 700 people praying. I went there for two hours. I left without a voice. Went there. 
and never went back to the dead church. And because I moved with the cloud at day and the pillar at night, I was able to meet David Wilkinson, mentor me, Nikki Cruz. I was able to meet Pastor Carter and one of the real men of God and challenged and grew. And was able to write eight books, going on nine books, able to do purpose and destiny because I decided to get up from the place that had an expiration date. had an expiration date. I'm almost finished with this. Let's not normalize something that God can break off you. He can destroy off you. He can pulverize. You, you, let me say like this, this last thing. I'm like, Pastor, he said he closes this morning. He said, I'm going to close again. So we like real estate broker. We can close the deal. <laughs> this is I want to say to you. Think about it. Sometimes we minimize God. Because we see God the way you see, you see yourself. You don't see him the way he wants you to see him. You with me? I just want you to catch this scripture. The Bible says, demons tremble yes. at his name. Yes. Now you ask yourself one question though. What did they see that they tremble? What they see that they're trouble. You know, I was the other day, I was in, I was in uh, Bakersfield preaching in Bakersfield. Two crazy warlocks came to my meeting. We had about 400 people. Two warlocks came. They sat in the corner to the, right, to the left, dressed in black. They were in the early 40s. It's on video. I didn't even know there was taping. I'm just crazy. Two warlocks, two big high rank witches came to the meeting. They sat, they came in acting like undercover Christians. And I felt the vibes coming out of them, this demonic vibe, these, this mystical fire coming out of them. And I, I didn't know there was recording. I stepped up to them. I said, yo, what's up? They said, what do you mean, what's up? I said, you two witches. You want some of this now? Or you want to wait after the meeting? How you want to do it? And they're like, we, we Christians. I said, no, you're not. You're witches. I said, how you want to do this? I said, I bust a cap on you right now. I tell them, you ain't playing here. We're going we to wait for the 3 o'clock. We're going to do it now. You, I stop the meeting, and when you bring your fire, I bring my fire. Right in the meeting. I know they were recording. It's on, it's on, on Facebook somewhere, or YouTube. I said, we do it right now. I ain't waiting for no 3 o'clock. You're going to punch me in my face. At 3 punch, I punch you in your face right now, spiritually. I'm talking about people. <laughs> I said, we do it right now. I said, you ever heard of Tombstone? Yeah. Doc Holliday? Yeah. I said, I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> I told him. I'm your Huckleberry. You want to do this now? We set it off now. You bring your father, I bring mine. Because, you see, I ain't going to let people restrict me and put boundaries. The last thing I say, Jesus picked me. I didn't pick him. Jesus picked you. You didn't pick him. Listen. Listen. Pharaoh. Moses, Aaron, sacrifice. I'm going to give it all to him. I'm going to make Jesus Christ proud that he picked me. Amen. I'm not going to be a, a Christian that God's going to say, I regret picking you. I'm going to be a Christian that God make Jesus Christ proud. Yes. And hell will rejoice when I leave the battlefield. Yes. I'm going to be in the remnant. I'm going to be in the fire. I'm going to be in the revival. I'm going all out. Gun blazings. Gangster. Yes. With Jesus. You with me? Because uh, Jesus, last thing I said, Jesus has the final word. Yes. Jesus has the final word today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Because you know what? My Bible says he is the word. So I have nothing. The case is close. You can't rebuttal. You can't appeal. He has the last word. There's no restrictions. There's no boundaries. There's no limitations. There's no putting me in a box. You ain't messing with my faith. My faith is crazy. I look like Gilligan in the outside, but I'm like Arnold on the inside. 
I don't care what you throw at me. It's what I do about it. I go, I've been to places to preach all over. All over. I preach in Japan, cast out Japanese devils. Sushi devils are coming out in Jesus' name. <laughs> preach. I had to take boats, cross waters to get to islands that they had airports. I got on propeller planes. I got on seaplane to bring the gospel. I'm gangster for Jesus. I'm OG for him. I ain't backing down. I'm not shrinking back. I ain't giving up, and I ain't giving in. And this is how we roll in this house. That's how we roll in this house. This morning was fire. That's how he rolled in his house. He rolled in his house. Ain't no compromising here. No. If this church don't fit you, baby, you know what you need to do? Step off. And go. There's plenty of dead churches and dead preachers in the world. Let me tell you something. There are dead churches and dead preachers in the world. Nine, nine, dime a dozen. They're on TV. I seen them on TV. You know, I love Trump. Trump is gangster. That's my boy. That's my boy. I'm going to buy him a shirt. Make up my own shirt. I ain't going to say no rainbows for Trump. How are you gay? You still have rainbow. Get your own rainbow. Get your own colors. Get your own colors. You still have stuff, and then you want to call it yours. God is, you know what God is so gangster? The Titanic was built by professionals, and it sunk. And an amateur built an ark. <laughs> That's how you know he's God. That's how I know he's God. So you stick with the professional. I hang out with the amateurs. Amen. <laughs> Think about that. Where you want to finish. With your walk. Pastor said some incredible things earlier today. Blew me away. He said, there's only two addresses, Jack. There's no purgatory for your Catholic people. That don't mean nothing. <laughs> Pastor said he, he, he was in a golf game. And someone said, why you say that? Why you don't pray him out? Pastor said, pray him out. I'm praying for you. <laughs> you alive. I need to pray for you. Pray him out. Pray him out from where? Purgatory. Ain't no purgatory. Purgatory. Listen, the thief at the cross, pastor talked about the thief at the cross. The thief at the cross couldn't earn his salvation. He was nailed to a cross. So that Jehovah Witness crap don't work. The whole Jehovah Witness, that don't work. He was nailed to a cross. How could he go out and sell girl cookies? To work for his salvation. He was now to a cross. He had lim limitations to die. He couldn't go anywhere. He couldn't even get baptized. You with me? And he, he, he confessed Jesus was the Christ, the son of the living God. And after that, Jesus said, today you be with me in paradise, not purgatory. Don't listen to that crazy pope. Or the Virgen Maria. The Virgin Mary, she's not a virgin anymore. <laughs> it's about getting right with Christ. The truth, the way, and the life. Amen. The truth, the way, and the life. I'm talking to someone here. He is the truth, the way, and the life. There's no other way, baby. There's no other way. I don't care how religious it is. I don't care if you're Buddha. Listen, Buddha don't know the way. Buddha don't know the way. Muhammad don't know the way. Amen. Hinduism don't know the way. They got an ugly guy, a little elephant with a bunch of hands. What kind of crap is that? They got like 3,000 guys, 6,000 guys. I'll be tired after the, the two. <laughs> Think about this. Muhammad said, that Jesus is not the son of God. Five or 700 years after he got on the scene. But they had over 500 eyewitnesses that saw it firsthand. So I'm going to believe the ones that saw it firsthand. Not this other guy that came 500, six years later. Let me leave you with this. Let me leave you with this. How is it? I'm going to put my faith on a fat guy. They've never been to heaven. 
Buddha never been to heaven. Right. Muhammad never been there. They never came from there. So I'm going to bet on this Jesus guy. Because yeah. I know he came from there. He knows the way back. Yeah. He's the only God that came from there and know the way back. Yeah. I'm going to go with him. Yeah. I'm going to go with him. He, I, I don't know about you, but I don't need a GPS. I got him. He knows. He came from heaven to earth. He died on the cross. He lifted up. He picked himself up. He know his way back to heaven. I don't care what book you bring. You better sit down. I don't care what book you bring. You better sit down. You could bring the devil's book. And your Halloween people, God got something for y'all too. Your, your chicken treaters, your chunk of trees, God got something for you. You dress up your kid, and when your daughter become a hoochie, and your kid become a drug addict addicted to drugs, blame you. Don't blame pastor. Blame you. Because you gave the devil your kid. You sacrificed your kid to the devil. How? You did it because you went and celebrated something, and you came in agreement with something, and you changed the identity of your child. And I leave you with this. When you turn around and you touch and agree with something demonic, it falls on you. So these stupid pastors, chunky tree, I'm doing it for safety reasons. Stupid. You don't have to do nothing for safety reasons. Take your chocolate and get out of my face. You need to do is repent from your sins because there's no Listen, when I was a Satanist, Man, you, you go show up on Good Friday, you won't wake up Saturday. The devil will kill you. If you go to Good Friday as a Satanist to a church and you go to a church on a Good Friday, I promise you, the next day you won't wake up. The devil will take you out. Satanists don't come to church on Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. We don't come to God's house because we despise it. So why would you go to the devil's house and play God dirty? Tell me about it. I'll leave you with that. How you like them apples? You fake Christians, Christian Dior's. Sitting, sitting there acting like you're a preacher and you're in bed with the devil. And the devil owns your church. He owns, he owns rights. He owns your children. Because you decided, I'm going to dress up like little Noah. Really? It's the identity of the agreement that you come with with something satanic. Even the Discovery Channel, which is a worldly channel, tells how demonic Halloween is. A worldly channel speaks about how demonic it is. And you in bed with that. Well, I guess the Hershey tastes better on October 31st. Really? I hope you get cavities. <laughs> hope your teeth fall out. <laughs> oh, my God, you think you took a tree? My talk was simple. I'm going to say the way it is. You lukewarm Christians, I'm going to tell you the way it is. Pastor talked about it today. Lukewarm Christian is, I know God, but I'm not excited about him anymore. You might as well go chicken tree. You don't need a costume. You're ugly anyway. Listen, if I'm going to do Christ, I'm going to do Christ. When I did the devil, I did the devil. I ain't do nothing in between. I did the devil for 25 years of my life. I ain't do nothing in between. Ain't no crazy. I'm going to go over there and light a candle. There ain't no candle. There ain't no Josario. There ain't no behind the la Lupe. There was no Virgin Mary. I ain't believe in the cross. I did devil 100%. I got married in Halloween. I had a demonic wedding. Witches and warlocks came to my wedding to baptize my wedding. I went all out. I got the marks here cut into my flesh when I sold my soul to the devil. I was crazy, 100% devil. Now I'm 1,000% Jesus. 1,000% Jesus. And I'm 100. I can't give Jesus 100. I got to give him 1,000 because I owe him everything and he owes me nothing. He came for me. He knew my address. 
He saved me. He sanctified me. He gave me his spirit. And he broke the generational curses in my family bloodline. I, I, I am here to impress nobody. I don't need to be cute. I owe him everything. He has the pen of my story. Ain't nobody else, baby. Ain't no chicken tree. Ain't no, uh, ain't no, uh, no, uh, Dia de la Muerte. Ain't none of that crap in my house. There's only one God and one God alone, one Jesus, the one that hung on the cross and paid the price for me. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't tripping. And this, this magic crap on, 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 on churches and this Halloween crap on churches and this, oh, we're going after the, it's the harvest. Well, go, go outside the church and go get some soul, stupid. God says the only harvest I know. The harvest, well, he said the work is a few and the harvest is plenty. I ain't talking about no chocolate, no kisses, Hershey bars and Kit Kats and all that crap. You go hang out with the devil. When the devil comes to collect, you are going to hell. You think, you think that the devil's a joke? Jesus never took the devil lightly in the Bible. Never took them lightly in the Bible. And that was God. And if God had needed the word to fight the devil off, what about you? What you got? What you got? You got nothing. What you got is a religious spirit. I ain't worried about that. I ain't tripping. Listen, March 11, 2019, I died in my apartment. Pastor's right. Pastor said, when you die, you see your body. I died in my apartment, 2019. In my apartment, I died. I was leaving. I saw my body. I was laying in the sofa, saw it, came out of my body. And uh, when you Christian, you die, it is off the hook. People say, not me. I, I, was come, I came out of my body, and it feel like a magnet is pulling you. And you have no control to put yourself back in the body. And then you see your body there, and you see your body there, you have no control. You see it, man, like, like I mean, crystal, like crystal daylight. You see your body there. And then when you're out of your body, you don't think the same way when you're in your body. And as I'm leaving, I looked at my body. You know, I, I've, been, I've been in Sit Roth a couple of times, you know, Sit Roth, Uncle Sit, I call him. I put him on the phone now if you want. And I see people say, oh, I left my body, and I looked down, and it was so ugly. Not me. I don't know, my body said, that Puerto Rican is off the hook. <laughs> and when I left, I was leaving, the sky was opening up. And all I said was, and it wasn't in my words. And I wasn't saying, oh, I'm going to cry. My daughter, my mom. You don't have those feelings when you leave. They're completely gone. You're another person when you're leaving outside of the body. And all I said was this. Lord, I'm disappointed that you're taking me home early. If you would have left me, I would have done so much more for you. And he put me back in my body. So my altar call is simple for you. Do you know him? Not religion. Not the Nueve Rosarios. Not Virgen Guadalupe. I think I know the man upstairs. The man upstairs is your neighbor. No one else. Don't give me that lingual. Do you know Jesus Christ?